Hello, everyone. Uh, dear guests, my name is Xiao Wang from Northwest Agriculture and Forestry University in China. And I'm very glad to be meet you here online. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the base editing and primary editing in farmed animals. So I'll briefly uh, talk from the, these four aspects. First, with the production of the genome, gene editing animals as the summaries, then come up with the single base editing in animals and uh, the primary editing in mice, and also the primary work we have done using the primary editors in uh, large animal cells. When talking about genome editing, they have a vast variety of applications with unprecedented potentials. Uh, for example, it can be used in home gene therapy and also used for screen drug targets and also for the ecological waiter controls and also for the synthetic biology. But for us, from agriculture industry, we are more focused on editing in crops or animals. So the CRISPR is actually simple. At first, it, the Cas9 was binding to the uh, genomic DNAs, and it was cutted with this, and it was recognized by this guide RNA, then introducing this double-strand brick. Afterward, it was repaired by two mechanisms. The one was named non-homologist and John, which induced uh, deletions, and another one is homology direct repairs. It's normally a result in insertions. So the genome editing in farm animals actually have a large number of applications. The most important one for us is to improve animal productivity. For example, by produce animals with enhanced uh, meat productivity, uh, especially uh, this is superstar gene mice study was uh, widely used in cattle, pigs, and also in sheep and goats. Another usage is to improve animal reproductivity, uh, namely to increase the litter size in animals. The, here are the three stories from our group. We were aimed to improve the litter size in sheep and goats. Another one is to produce animals which are resistant to some severe disease. Uh, for example, to produce animals resistant to tuberculosis in dairy cattle, and also pigs to resistant to PRRS virus. Uh, we can also produce milk, milk that can be can reach in melatonin, and also the dairy uh, produce dairy. Uh, goods, uh, which are free with the beta -lact lactoglobulin. Another one is to improve the animal welfare. Uh, this, those are the famous uh, put dairy cattle animals produced by the exigen, and also they analyze the, the subsequent generations from these uh, ponies and animals. And another one is to modeling some homing disease, for example, to produce pig models for Parkinson disease and also the sheep models for the cystic fibrosis. The last one would be the xeno transplantation to providing organs to homing, for example, to people who produce pigs that can produce the homing insulin and also to produce animals for the pacrisis. When people uh, apply this technology in agriculture, especially in farm animals, they are more concerned about the uh, of targets besides the to this targeting efficiency. So of targets are actually introduce unwanted mutations at the genome. Since the Cas9 can recognize a short target sequences, as these guideline sequences can also tolerate a certain number of mismatches. People will develop a number of uh, methods to reduce these off-target efforts. For example, can use the pairwise mixers and also the trunks, the guide RNA, to use a function of the FOC1 dimmer and also with some modifications of the Cas9. And here is a summary that why uh, that people have been developed a number of methods to detect the off-target mutations which were caused by the genome editing especially its targeted sequencing and whole genome sequencing, which we also use uh, widely. So next, I'm going to talk about the base editors we have we used. These are the three uh, new editors or editors which were derived from the CRISPR 
a system. And with this rapid evolution, we are now more and more openly use this uh, CRISPR Cas9 applications uh, and base editors are now um, with these newly emerged prime editors. So first, I'm going to uh, talk about the base editor systems. The main advantage of this one is the base editor will not induce the double strand break, and with also with the less in the insertion deletion mutations, and the efficiency is much higher compared with the SSODN approach. And also, it can be applied to a large number of the nucleotide transition, since most of the phenotypes in humans or in animals are, intri are caused by the single mutations. But these base editors also have some limitations. Uh, it can only able to convert only like four out of 12 possible base conversions and also induce some unintended mutations within the editing window and also have uh, available for some of the sequences since it is difficult to design the guidelines. And people also develop a large number of the editors or the, to modify the different situations. For example, from the left side, you can decide the suitable base editors for the different editing windows and also for different sequence uh, features. And David Liu at their group recently published a review paper and gave us a sele selection tree for us to how to choose a proper base editors for our application. So first, first story come up with the fibroblast growth factor 5 gene, which this is this gene is a major determinant to control the higher lens in mammals. Therefore, we want to disrupt this gene or induce the stopocodons in the first axon to ease the animals with longer hair. Uh, firstly, we target the first guide RNAs as the first axon of this gene. And we finally generated five edited animals uh, with the uh, targeted mutations at the target site. And the phenotypes for our edited animals is, uh, is also promising. And we observed uh, in, our, in the four edited animals, the, the higher length is longer than the control animals. But when we conduct the RNA sequencing using the skin tissues from the edited animals and also the control animals, this FGF5 gene was not uh, significantly expressed between these two groups. So implying that this the mechanism of this gene is post-translation. And we also check the, the protein of this FGF5 in the skin tissues that we see in all the four at its animals, the expression of the protein was almost uh, gone. And we also checked the phenotypes in, in the using the morphological data at VC. We observed the more secondary hair follicles in the mutant animals. And also in our Alice animals, expression of this FGF5 was decreased compared with the control animals. That explains why this, why the hair was grew much longer compared in the wild type animals. And we are, since in the animal applications, we are more concerned about off targets. So first we sequence this press pre-select off targets, uh, predict off targets when we, we actually uh, identified one off target state. And we next sequence the, the mother and father animals and we see this, uh, this as this off target size is actually not off target. We also are concerned about how about the off target mutation at the genome wide scale. To do this, we sequence all these four edited animals, the five edited animal, animals, and, and four control animals. After we uh, identified like more than 10 million SNPs, after the a series of the 13 procedures, and we see that the, the rest of the off target mutations as within this red box is actually very rare. And next gene is the super pressor of the cytosine signal 2 gene. And this gene was previously reported is associated with the increased body size. Therefore, we target this gene from C2T use the base editor 3. And uh, here you can see the phenotypes we actually observed the increased body weight 
and also other board parameters in our three edited animals compared with the control animals. And using this trail-based whole genome sequencing strategy, we were able to identify the nodes of target mutations in, in the edited animals, but also we use the trail-based sequencing to exclude that the mutations will also exist in the, in the parents. And after a series of the 13 procedures, we were able to identify the off-target mutations in these three animals, or actually zero. And next, we are more concerned about the denoural mutations in the whether the genome editing induced some denoural snips or denoural indels in the edited animals. And after a series of the 13 procedures, like uh, as you can see from the figure CD, uh, actually, we finally only identified that the denoural SNPs in our edited animals is like around 15 or 18. And this number is uh, after we calculated the mutation rates in our edited animals. And this actually, this mutation rates in the edited animals, sheep and goats, is actually equivalent, equivalent to the natural population in colony cattle and also in different populations of the human beings. Uh, these are the uh, base editors, the CBE stories. And next, we also would like to uh, want to check whether the ABE, the, which is the editing, ed base editing, is working in large animal models. And uh, in our uh, sheep population, which is named, which is called a tail sheep from the west part of China, uh, we can see in this population, this G allele is actually highly expected because the G allele, uh, meaning that with the, the, a larger lead size. Therefore, we want to introduce this G allele in this population. And they, we designed this study. And for the very first time, we uh, generate the, the animals with the ABE and also the previous stories with CBE in our uh, shape or goat animals. And we actually success, successfully generated the the, as the target size from A allele to, to G allele. And we use three uh, ABE, ABEs to check whether uh, which one is with the high efficiency. And finally, we, we found that the ABE max in, in the shape is with the highest targeting efficiency. Therefore, we use ABE max for the following studies. And uh, Here you can see from all the edited animals, and we observed uh, in most of the animals, we generate the target mutation from A to J conversions. And also, we also like observe some additional bystander mutations. The next one, we, after the emerging of this prime, prime editing, Editors, we want to check that whether this one is working in uh, animal models. And first, we, we check in the, in the mice because it's easy to handle. Uh, with the prime editor, there are some advantages that can in, induce all 12 other base conversions uh, instead of the CB and AB. And it, it is also able to induce target small insertions and also deletions and also encoding the combinations. And uh, actually, this prime editor does also does not need the double thread break as the same, the CBE and ABE. But also, with, it has some limitations, because uh, this is a newly emerged uh, editor. Therefore, the efficiency is quite low. And all, uh, now it needs the uh, optimization at the structure uh, level. Uh, first, we validated whether the PB3 is worked in the homing cells, as, as they reported from Anolan, uh, from David Liu group, uh, later last year. And we found that from eight loci we choose, six of the loci were working as this, uh, its, its size. Next, we checked whether this uh, P3 is working in, in vitro. We use the mass. Uh, N2A cells uh, in vitro, and we said we found that three target size was uh, working at with the targeting efficiency from 
percentage, and next we systematically evaluated the PGR different RT PBS sense, and we found that the uh, in our the, in, uh, in the in we world in there is extremely low in the PB systems, and we are also like uh, concerned about the of target mutations in this uh, P systems uh, based on the this this theory of the parameter the of target mutations should be extremely well. So therefore we use two different methods. One is the target deep sequencing of the predicted sites. Another one is we sequence two mutant animals from our uh, mutant mice. And we from both data we see here that no detectable of targets were um, revealed. And next one, we want to apply this method primarily in large animals, since in large animals it will take a much longer time, and hopefully we will get our uh, PE edited animals uh, early next year. Uh, but first we tried whether the PE is working in the in vitro, therefore we select uh, up to 10 genes in either the in sales from either sheep or goats, as we see from here, that the targeting efficiency is actually around 18 percentage in our sheep or goat sales. So the short summary here, and examination of target mutations is actually a crit critical step in the agriculture or in food animals uh, applications, and also this new technology web of the base and parameters are of critical importance to introduce different um, base conversions, especially for agriculturally important traits, because most of the agriculturally important traits are uh, controlled by the single mutations, single nucleotide mutations. And uh, as you also you can see here that the parameter is with the low frequency even. We are also working on that to improve the targeting efficiency uh, in, of the parameters, but future optimization is highly needed to improve the parameter. So lastly, I would like to thank our collaborators uh, from Damascus uh, and also from international and also uh, our funding from local and national. I would like to take out this opportunity to thank you again for your listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. Goodbye.